I, I'm so busy. Earlier on, I went and bought some flyers. I like, got them printed at the, at the print shop. And then I was so much in a rush to get out. I was like, paid for it and left. And I've left my USB stick with him. <laughs> oh, I have to go back and get that tomorrow. I don't have time for this, Kieran. I'm cash now. My moussaka is in the oven. It's got another 20 minutes. I've got plenty of time, mate. This is Sheer Isolation. It's presented by Kieran Moore in Trowbridge and John Ponting in Cricklade. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on Sheer Isolation. I am John in Cricklade and Kieran is just smiling at me in Trowbridge because I started that link slightly weirdly. Well, I don't know if it was you or if it was my, my connection, but it kind of went like really computerized. It was really bizarre, your voice. I was like, what the hell is going on? Well, we do record on Zoom, so occasionally sound does clip and jump around a bit. I just don't want to sound like some kind of drunken robot for the entire show. <laughs> when you said robot, it did it again! <laughs> uh, as always, we're going to do our bit this week to promote and highlight the uh, music and art scene across the West. And uh, I'm going to start off by throwing over to Kieran to say, what have you been up to, you busy little boy? I've had the best 72 hours of my life. So that's a Friday statement. night. Wow. It's a huge statement. Friday night, film, sold out, a few extra on the door. Brilliant. Saturday, interviews for the new director's job at Trowbridge Town Hall. Free lunch. Brilliant. Evening, gig. Uh, it was a two week short notice band lineup. It was Carsick from Salisbury and a local band called Lucky Number Seven. It was absolutely exceptional. The band had a free meal. It was leftover food from the um, from the interviews. Absolutely sensational. Then Sunday we did it all again. Sold out. Um, uh, Andy Bell from Ride Stroke Oasis, and I just did the most amazing seventy-two hours. It was great. See, in my brain, I just picked up that you said free meal twice, and I've only just eaten, but this, I've got no reason to think, oh, free meals. You've had two free meals. Wow. <laughs> well, it was on the same day and I kind of ate lunch again in the evening. <laughs> but it was, it was those amazing samosas. They were like, they were masses for starters. They were like, they were huge, like huge. And I was just, oh, it was so lush. I could eat them all over again. And the music, was that any good? Oh, the music was brilliant. So, John, uh, one of the things I wanted to say was we, we pick a track every week and I really wanted to pick a track by a band from Salisbury called Carsick. Brand new band sort of super group it's my friend jack richardson his new band um they've got two songs in the public domain a song called um it is what it is and a song called muzzle muzzle has already been picked up by steve lamack and played on radio six i'm so flipping excited about this band but um they came and played reasonably short notice town hall in trowbridge and they absolutely blitzed it and they said to me, Kieran, can we play for you on the 5th of March? And I said, we've got a gig at the town hall. I'll see if we can get a band added to the bill. That band, that those bands are Slag Heap are the headliners, supported by Karsik, Karsik and Slug Puppy. What an array of names. What the hell? What a time to be alive with band names like that, eh? Hey? Slag Heap, <laughs> Slug Puppy, Karsik. I mean, that's got to pique your interest, hasn't it? And we also just need to say that we, we do have a guest coming up and it's uh, Sean Buswell, uh, yes. who is the, the man behind the pop-up orchestras. This is a fascinating interview that we're going to come on to uh, later in the show. The song we're going to play is by Swindon technical metal band called Webb. Their new drummer is Nigel Powell from Frank Turner and the Sleeping Souls. Um, Nigel's a long-term friend of mine. I've known him for years. Um, I put him on when he was in his third or fourth band called Dive Dive, who did really, really well. I've known him for sort of 17 years. I love the guy to bits. I'm really excited about re being reunited with him. Uh, so this is a track by Webb called When Darkness Falls.
So that was When Darkness Falls by Swindon based technical metalers, Web. And for people who know uh, Nigel, who you mentioned earlier on, that, that's it's very different to when he does his solo stuff with like the Sad Song Company. But then he's also been doing stuff like this previously in, in other bands historically, hasn't he? So. He's, I mean, he is a really t- proficient, capable drummer. Um, he's played in rock bands, he's played in indie bands, he's played in folk bands, and now he's trying his hand at metal bands. And he is an exceptional, exceptional musician. He's got such skill and calibre behind him. Um, I think this is just him pushing himself, really. I think it's quite quite exciting. And like I said, I'm really excited to see him and see how, how it all comes off live. Sweet. OK, uh, I will let you get on to your product placement because I know you are itching to show me something. From here, so, it just looks like a vinyl with a picture of a bus on it. It's the Chris TT album, the 253. It's, it was Chris's debut um, album. It, he, he pressed it onto vinyl. Um, it was, I, I'm an obsessive Chris TT fan. I'm, I've got literally everything he owns on vinyl. Um, and this is a record I bought um, from Greece, bizarrely enough, that turned up in the post today. And I'm most delighted to see it. So that, that was my product placement. He no longer performs. He's a legend. I love him. So I bought all, I think this is my complete, my Chris TT set, John. I think I've got it all now. What's his style? He's a folk singer. Um, he, he, Frank Turner um, famously um, covered one of his songs in Frank's early days. I mean, he went on to just sort of make great folk rock music. As Karen said, he's not doing any new stuff, but you can find his old stuff on the internet, I am sure. On Time for guest. a guest. Time for a guest. Um, this week we are joined by uh, Swindon musician, he's London based now, Sean Buswell. Um, he's he's really well known uh, for being, well, he, he had a band called Buswell and he's done a few other musical projects. Um, but now his, it seems to be his main focus is working with random musicians he finds busking on the tube. Absolutely inspiration. Um, yeah, he, what, what an incredible way to spend some time. We didn't actually cover it in the in the interview, funnily enough. I forgot to mention it, but he did get a lot of funding for this, like via Arts Council and things like this. And if nothing else, the guy's a genius for simply getting a holiday out of it all. <laughs> <laughs> a trip into Europe with some musicians into a recording studio. <laughs> and they call it work in the name of art. I mean, what a, what a great guy. I'm going to have to try that out myself. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we were talking to Sean um, primarily about the, the pop-up orchestra, which is the, the name for, for what he's been doing the last couple of years. But, uh, yeah, it, it's just a really nice uh, interview and it's, it's fascinating bloke just to hear about how he came up with the idea and, and how it formed into, into what it is now. For the benefit of everybody who's listening, uh, who, who don't know you, just give us a quick outline of some of the things you've done in an incredibly vast array of things in your career. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, yeah, so I started off uh, making music in Swindon, uh, doing it solo. Then I moved into doing it as a five piece uh, under the name Buzzwell. So we had drums, bass, piano, vocals and violin. Uh, we released a single called Let Me Love that got into the why well, it was predicted as in the top five um, UK charts. And then we had a, a series of problems releasing it at the right date and it never got anywhere. <laughs> so oh! the song the song never got out. But the, the video did get playlisted on MTV. Um, and we were in Amazon's Hot 100 CD singles. Um, and then from there, just did a variety of different sort of musical endeavours around Swindon, then moved up to London and started getting into doing these sort of like what were pop-up orchestra shows. So the first sort of big one, well, actually, the first big one was Swindon-based. It was um, before I could even do anything with an orchestra, I had to find an existing orchestra and convince them to do a concert with me, even though I can't read a note of music or had, hadn't written anything for them. Um, and it was actually the Royal Wharton Bassett Orchestra, a um, guy oh, called cool. Cliff Parker, who was the conductor. Yeah, he he agreed to to do it. And yeah, we did it at the Wyvern, did a one-off show at the Wyvern for a charity called Kick for Life, mm. which um sort of springboarded all of these different orchestra challenges that I've done. So yeah, forming orchestras from strangers has become something that's fairly sort of common for me now. Um, and um, where, where, where did that idea come from? It's quite think, a unique idea. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the orchestra side of things, I've, I've always heard music orchestrally. So even though I can't read or write it properly, I'd still hear it. So when I'm writing music, it's kind of what I hear, sort of cinematic film scorey stuff, I guess. Um, so after doing the stuff with the Royal Water Bassett Orchestra, I... I I tried to work out how I could do it again and what, and, you know, it's, it's difficult working with orchestras, particularly existing ones, because unless there's a, a, 
a valid reason for everyone to get involved in it. It's just really costly for everyone. Um, so yeah, just trying to think of the right ways of doing it. And then um, once I moved up to London, I started form, I formed like, would have been like a 16 piece, I guess we had like, you know, the normal drums, bass, guitar, piano, and then a string section, little brass sections, flutes. Um, and from there, we were just rehearsing one day, coming back on the tube. Um, and uh, one of the musicians said, oh, we didn't, we never got around to rehearsing this song. Should we just get our instruments out and do it now? So I sort of shouted to everyone on the carriage and said, look, we're not busking. We're not asking for money, but we're just going to get our instruments out and just run for a song we hadn't done. No one seemed to mind. So we got our stuff out, started playing. One by one, the musicians had to get off at their respective stops. And at one stop, uh, this violinist got off. And as, as he did, a girl with a violin case walked on. And we're like, hey, is that a violin? She was like, yeah. I said, do you want to join us? The music's here. So she just went, yeah, okay. So she opened her book. Um, opened the book that was there got out her violin and just started playing so she played like two or three songs and then said I've, this is my stop I gotta get going see you later um, no idea who she was you know we never exchanged names she just literally came on and communicated with us via her playing and that was it and wow. as she walked off this Irish guy at the end of the carriage stood up and went and this is why London is the best city in the world and it made me think you know could I do it on a bigger scale so that's when I spent a whole year traveling around the London underground to form the orchestra that was the underground orchestra, which was um, a 68 piece managed to form just purely from random strangers that I bumped into on the, the underground. So no one, no one could be recruited um, in advance. No one could um, ask to be involved. The, the criteria was purely had to be carrying your instrument and I had to bump into you at random on the London underground. Now, am I right in thinking there there is multiple then videos of you on YouTube where you're trying to approach people and you're either <laughs> getting run run away from or people just say no or you're getting having a lovely conversation with them? Yeah, the majority of people were running away from me. If I'm honest, it was a really difficult difficult challenge to do, and everyone's in a rush when they're on the underground. You know, it's it it was always going to be a, a, a proper challenge, um, but yeah, it took me 346 days, I think, um, wow. and met you know met probably about 250 people i think it was and of that 68 of them agreed to do the show which is yeah just incredible really that's still a pretty yeah. good return there it's like one in five almost it was that's actually not bad. no i was really really surprised by the the response that we had and i think for a lot of people they just they loved the idea that it was quite unique that they were just plucked through serendipity but also it gave a lot of musicians and what this is what i noticed and, and what sort of happened since is really good caliber musicians gravitate to this kind of project a bit because they're like well I don't have to commit to a lot I literally just turn up on the day perform and then I'm gone um so it requires someone who's really adept at being able to read music or pick up music really quickly um but it's low maintenance and it's low commitment so it tends to work quite well yeah so yeah it's, okay. it's Going back to the caliber thing of musicians, you, see, yeah. you had some absolutely exceptional musicians, didn't you, oh, in incredible. your orchestra? Yeah, incredible. I mean, there's one of the trumpet players is currently on tour with Simply Red. I think he does a lot of stuff with them and recorded. One of the violinists was the violinist with the Divine Comedy. You know, these are uh, amazing. You know, one of the trumpet players had, had recorded with Ray Charles. You know, these are wow. really, really good people. Great, great musicians. And the thing that for me was really amazing about it is not only were they incredible musicians, but they were all really kind people to agree to do this. Now, um, tell me something. Uh, I know that you did this in Europe as well, didn't you? So we we did uh, a challenge a few years back in Paris where we uh, went across formed a 27 piece orchestra in 10 days and then recorded 12 songs in just six hours in a big studio in Paris. Uh, and we're currently finalizing. That was a few years back. We've been working on the documentary for it to tell the story of it. Uh, and the idea was always going to be, we released the documentary and the album at the same time. So we've been waiting, sort of uh, itching to kind of release all this stuff. The documentary is almost finished finally. Um, and we're hoping it will be probably on Amazon prime. Amazing. Um, so yeah we're just in that final stages of sorting out at the moment that's my uh my bugbear as soon as this big concert's over i'm getting my head back down to uh to documentary making you're not just stopping now i am it's continuing on yeah so um uh, sort of when i started looking at doing these pop-up orchestras uh i i really started to work heavily with um, a swedish composer and producer called eric nyberg who was the 
um, lead uh, in a band called The Flaming Moes. So Flaming Moes and Buzzwell, we'd both toured together. I knew him really well. Um, incredible musician and really good producer. And then um, he just really seemed to fit this whole thing that we do of just being able to just create stuff sort of randomly quickly. So we formed Buzzwell and Nyberg basically um, a few years back. And all of these challenges that I'm talking about have involved him as well. Um, we've traveled around the UK three times. We've done 10 day challenges where we've traveled up and down the UK forming orchestras in different cities uh, and have to reach, it was a hundred musicians we had to make in the first one, then 150 in the second. Um, we've, and the second one we did, we had to travel around the UK in the shape of a giant cock and balls as well. It was the, the, the year of Brexit. So it was our, our statement about Brexit. Um, so yeah, we have drawn the largest GPS penis on the, the UK, 400 miles long. Um, and we tracked it. People could watch it as we were driving around and tracking it. Each of the 10 venues we did were, were a route on this uh, giant dobber. Incredible. Um, <laughs> And yeah, so, so yeah, we've, we've continued to do these projects, you know, sort of year, almost year on year, uh, even in the, in the pandemic, we did a lockdown uh, orchestra last year where we got everyone together and recorded something remotely. And then this year is the first year we're going to try and do it again in person. Um, and we're doing a show on the 13th of March at Earth, which is in Hackney. And we've got a 55 piece orchestra together, all from random people who have just contacted me and that I've contacted, you know, put ads out trying to find people. So they've never met each other. And the first day that they'll all meet will be on the day of the show. And then we're doing a, um, a big show. It's called Buzzwell and Nyberg versus Extra Mile. Uh, and there'll be seven Extra Mile acts who are Frank Turner, Mole Historical Society, Johnny Lloyd, Pet Needs, Deus Furiouses. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's Deus Furiouses. Um, uh, guys and Berries. So, yeah, incredible. And then we've got some other special guests. We've got Charlie Draper, who's coming along playing the Ond Martineau, which is this incredible old eerie instrument which is um he plays the theremin he's one of the, the great theremin players of, of the world at the moment Amazing. The, um, yeah recorded the soundtrack for loki for the new marvel tv show oh, very cool. uh, yeah so he's a really incredible musician so he'll be playing with us and doing some some music and we've got hannah rose platt uh who's i think she's now based in bristol uh incredible uh singer songwriter so she'll be doing some songs with us as well um, and Martina, Mariska Martina, who is an amazing cellist, who will also be doing a solo song. So, so much going on just for the uh, the one night, yeah. And it's such an incredible venue as well. We've put a few oh, teasers up on our Instagram. It is an amazing place. It was an old theatre, and it's got the old sort of, um, you know, um, carved in seating. So, looks like, um, uh, like I think the, the cinema stopped working. The last thing they showed was Jaws. So it's been, you know, it's been years and years since it was used as a theatre um, and a, as a cinema. But yeah, it's now, yeah, it's now used as a music theatre um, and it has a huge stage. The stage is like 200 square metres. So it's massive. So it's, it is huge. It's like bigger than any stage we've ever been on. So it gives us the opportunity to, you know, we've got a harp player. We're going to have like, you know, full, full drums band with like accordions and harps and guitars and then 20 seven piece string section big brass section timpani so many instruments this time around like i've never i've never written for a harp i don't even know what i'm doing you know incredible and, and vibraphone as well we've got like a whole orchestra percussion set with like timpani and big snares and cymbals and i'm almost i'm not entirely certain whether whether it's a um, a good idea i'm seeing if we can find any budget to get a gong giant <laughs> gong just it feels like if we're going to do it any night now seems like the time to just gog away yeah you know what i think i'm totally with you on that i think you're absolutely got to do that yeah the last note has to be a gong doesn't it it feels like it's right where can people buy tickets easiest place is just to go to the earth website which is it's earth hackney but hackney the h in earth and hackney are the same earth hackney basically earth hackney <laughs> Yeah, earthacne.co.uk brings up um, all of the stuff there. Or they can just find, if they type in Buswell and Nyberg, Extra Mile, um, they'll find loads of stuff online about what we're doing. Um, and it's good if people can pick up tickets soon because these are the last early bird tickets that are just about to sell out. So they can get themselves a bit of a discount if they pick it up early. Did you pick a song? Uh, yes. Um, I decided it would be nice to play one of the songs that we're working on from the documentary. 
Um, okay, cool. Where you can actually hear the, the 27 musicians in the studio all together. Um, song that was composed. Also, we had to write all the music when we were over there or write as much of it as possible. So this song didn't exist until we went across to Paris, which I think is fascinating. If you imagine on the 1st of April, we traveled out there and then this was on the 10th of April or the 9th of April, we actually went into the studio to record it. So, you know, on the 1st of April, it didn't exist at all. And then, and then 10 days, 10 days later, this is what you hear. Okay. One, two, three. Tired of wasting time explaining that your life's a lie. Come on here and let me crawl inside your mind and see the beauty that survives. When you're tired of sleeping. Just to keep reality at bay Your dreams will bind me back To find a way The heights Behind the echoes of our soul And when it's, it's all gone wrong Just keep carrying on when you feel like you've lost Just fight on whatever the cost No goodbyes, no regrets Keep your head up and never forget That you're safe from harm If you believe that you are never far away from me you do it to yourself Is it the only way to feel alive Come on here I'll teach you to survive This thing It's not as big as you might think If you're battling demons Blur all of your thoughts out of control Try to find a focus in your soul Oh, it's there In time you'll see it's everywhere So when it's, it's all gone wrong Just keep, keep carrying on when you feel like you've lost Just fight on whatever the cost No goodbyes, no regrets Keep your head up and never forget That you're safe from harm If you believe that you are never far away from me Okay, the track we have just played is called Realize and it is by the pop-up orchestra. That track contains 27 musicians. Uh, and as Sean said, they um, it didn't exist on the first of the month and they recorded it on the ninth. Genius. We've mentioned previously on, on the show about Mindy Festival, which is a, a village festival that gets some really impressive big 
act uh, to perform there. Um, they've obviously had to cancel the last couple of years because of COVID. They are back this year, 1st to the 3rd of July. Um, in the last week, they have confirmed Cast are going to play. It's a pop, indie pop band from the 90s. They did Sandstorm. Yes. I'm not sure what else they did, but I know they had a few hits. Find so Time, Walk Away. There's loads of songs. Mm -hmm. They're joining the lineup, which includes Jesus Jones, Space, and Doctor and the Medics. You know what? I, I think that is a really strong lineup. They, they mm. have, I think they're going all out on that. Well done, yeah. them. And also, remember, John, previous guest, George Davis, is the Mighty um, lead lighting technician. Mm. And the thing I love about Mighty as well is that you've got some really big names there, but the rest of the lineup is all local bands. Yeah. There's no middle ground. It's local, 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 big. Which is great. Yeah. So yeah, that's happening in Mindy at the start of July. Excellent. Just a couple of uh, events that are happening in the coming weeks then. Um, the Gloucester Folk Trail, this is something I've not heard of before, so it's happening the 18th to 20th of February, three days. So many gigs, it's all kind of folk, it's acoustic, there's even some poetry going on, and it's happening in venues across Gloucester. Um, three full days of nothing but live events. So you can check that out. Uh, have a look up, see who's playing. If you're going to be, in, if you've got a spare weekend and you're near Gloucester, I can, I'm sure you'll be able to find some live music and events that you can go to for that. A couple of other things are happening around the region. I think Kieran's looking up the folk trail now. He's googling something. I'm hoping it's that. maybe, maybe. <laughs> and it's just nice to see that some um, the smaller venues like the Beehive in Swindon, they've got their um, live music coming back and. Uh, uh, on the 25th, I've just picked an, as an example, you can see some bluegrass from a band called Texas Tick Fever. They're not from Texas, they are from the West Country, but I just... Uh, tick Fever. Tick yeah. Fever. Tick. Texas tick Fever. Tick fever. Do you ever watch on telly the play that goes wrong? No. It's like Christmas yeah, specials like and that. It's like, it's like amateur dramatics, but it all, everything goes wrong. Well, they, they've, they've done a fair bit of stuff on the BBC, and they're now doing a national tour of a magic show, which they've, compo they've compiled it with the help of Penn and Teller. So, okay, cool. So, so it's a magic show where everything goes wrong in comedic effect. Um, and that's going to be at Cheltenham for the next two weeks. I think it's on until about the 22nd of February. So they're doing a UK tour. They've been very successful in London and I've taken it around the country. That's very cool. That's probably about all we've got time for today. So if you want to get in touch, you can email sheerisolation at gmail.com or find us online sheerisolation.co.uk. Uh, find us on our streaming services. We're, we're on most of the streamers. Um, and yeah, there is another show done. Thank you for your Good time, job. Kieran. I, I appreciate every second of your time. I know it's very precious. It is very precious. So I'm going to eat my tea now, John. All right, you go and enjoy your, your Moroccan doodah. Cheers, mate. I'll talk to you soon. See you later, bud. Bye-bye. Take care. Yeah. Bye.